Hello guys, good evening, good day, good morning, good night, whenever you're watching this video, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be discussing, there's going to be not many re much reaction, but it's going to be mostly discussion regarding the Moldova national uh, selection. My motherland. Uh, I would like to share some of my thoughts, of some of my remarks, ideas, and hopefully dreams to came true regarding my candidate for Eurovision 2019 Republic of Moldova. So, there are much to talk about my country. Uh, first of all, my first mention would be it is the poor organization from Teleradio Moldova. I very much, very much disgraced about the quality of the video regarding the quality of the staging they are, prof they are providing during the national selection. Their poor digital uh, presence, their terrible YouTube um, uh, management, because the video, they, they, they use the same poster for many, many years so far. I just see a very lazy work from Teleradio Moldova and I hope they're going to lose their rights to host Eurovision. And I hope there's going to be so many very cool, young, new channels, TV channels in Republic of Moldova as Prime, Journal TV, uh, Publica and many, many others who can take this responsibility and to uh, host. So far, I'm very sad because I wish our Republic of Moldova would do the same national selection as Ukraine do, uh, does. You know, they're choosing different types of music, they're choosing the best, and then they are let them to compete and let the country select their uh, most interesting for this year uh, candidates. So, for example, we had uh, Maruf, who is a very electro pop song. We have a uh, Cupidon, which is a very retro uh, pop music. Uh, we had. Uh, Brunchat Blondes, which is experimenting, young, uh, you know, type of the music. Uh, we had so many different uh, genres in uh, Ukrainian selection, and I wish we could do the same in the Republic of Moldova. However, at this moment, we have, uh, to my point of view, a big fight and the only fight between ballads on one side and the pop music on the other side. Uh, we have 10 representatives, 10 finalists. I am going to mention uh, a couple of them, which I do believe deserve attention. It's going to be Ana Odobescu, it's going to be uh, Tina G, it's going to be uh, Marcella Skripkaru, Vera Tsurkano, and KMD. That would be my top five. Either though I like the song of Lemonique, Gravity, but I still believe it's a poor arrangement and poor studio production made, uh, even though it's a very interesting band. It's a very interesting new band. I wish them good luck. I hope them to see performing and advancing, evolving on a national stage. Uh, but so far, Diana Breskin is also a beautiful, very beautiful, gorgeous woman. Very talented, good voice. Unfortunately, it was a boring song this year. I didn't like Lies. I'm not going to consider Chem Day. It's a different type of the music. It's going to be more folk. I don't really find myself in this song, Supermoon, because it more sounds like a Russian song, like, you know, like a Russian marching song. So we don't really have much in common with Russia anymore. And I don't think that they should represent the Republic of Moldova, even though their song is quite interesting. Lume, the format Lume was supposed to be in the final. Whatever some many like or did not like, they should have been in the final. It was disgraceful. What they did, the jurists, they had a good voice, they had a cool song. It was much better than many of the finalists. They should have been in a, in a competition. Unfortunately, there is a political drama. Uh, Format Salumi has gained a quite terrible reputation supporting some of her um, outraged politicians. And there is drama in Moldova as well, Eastern Europe. Yes, we're all about political drama because, guys, it's a hard transition from capitalism, from communism to capitalism, and we are fighting with oligarchs, we are fighting with many different issues, uh, Russia, media, and many, many other propaganda. So, yes, there is drama, and it's healthy to have it. That's how the transition takes place. So, unfortunately, we did not participate. I wish they're gonna come, I hope they're gonna come next year. So far, as I've said, it's gonna be ballads between pop. I have selected these uh, contestants for the pop, for the ballads. I might assume that Ana Odobescu might be a jury favorite uh, and Marcella Skripkaru. 
these two uh, contestants, I believe they will be the main uh, gamers in the ballots uh, um, category. In a pop, I do believe it might be Vera Turcano, not might be, it's going to be Vera Turcano and probably against Tina G. So let's start with the ballad. Uh, we have uh, Ana Odabescu, um, the song Stay. The song Stay, I like a lot Ana Odabescu's voice. That song, it's a very traditional, you know, very typical Eurovision song, very typical. It can be more typical or cliche, the song, as of Ana Odabescu. Uh, I really like, there is some growing, you know, structure. It was very flat. The climax was not really climax, was not a culminating, you know, moment of the song. It's very flat to my point of view, it's very stable and it's boring and it's a song which you will definitely fall asleep. I would definitely fall asleep um, listening to the song. Uh, it's a good voice, but I don't think it's enough. Uh, I wish there was some, you know, some small details in the sound, the little tricks, you know, that could, you know, splash this water because it's way too dead and I hope maybe they can do something in a live performance, maybe in the live it's gonna sound much better, much more interesting, but in the ballad category I would probably stick with Marcella Skripkaro. What do we know about Marcella Skripkaro? She's been participating in many Romanian X Factor, Romania has get voice, so she is quite, a, she has got some experiences with, the, you know, performing on a big stage, with handling some pressure, some stress, uh, the song Meteor, it's uh, more appealing to me rather than uh, Stay from Ana Odabescu. It has some hooks, it's, uh, it sounds very uh, youthful. Um, the song is quite playful even though it's a ballad. Um, and it's, it's really, it could be really interesting and potentially representative of Moldova, really. And in this category that's why I would leave Marcella Skipkaru as the main representative of the ballad category. Uh, she's very youthful, she's very young, full of energy. I don't know how she's on a stage yet, I haven't seen her live. But if we say, if we would analyze the ballads category, obviously I would have gone, I would have give the, given the trophy to Marcella Skripkaru. On the other side, we have a pop music. Here, I could also consider Limonique being in the competition, but however, I still believe it's going to be the fight between Tina G virus and uh, Vera Turcano mm -hmm, called. Uh, Tina G is a brand new, it's a quite new uh, singer, uh, artist in Moldovan um, music industry. The song does sound a little bit very aggressive, very powerful, very strong, uh, which I like it, it's good. It sounds very modern somehow, very contemporary. Which, uh, what I don't like is uh, the chorus, it's a little bit too heavy for me, but I'm sure there could be done some um, some work on that as well. I don't see any offers or compositors, so I do believe Tina G was the, it is the writer and the compositor of this song, which is an honorable work, honestly, it's a good job, a well done job, um, Tina G. Um, but however, that song, it's just, you know, when you add too much milk into a coffee, you don't feel coffee anymore and the drink does uh, taste way too heavy. That would be probably the same with Tina G. It's too aggressive, it's too loud, those trumpets or whatever it plays. And I need a little piece, you know, it's very interesting when the song reads, you know, a little piece, a little bit attack, a little bit piece, a little bit. So, you know, back and forth, back and forth, but when you're only pressuring, but then if you're pressuring, you know, if you are, uh, keep insisting on attacking, right, on being very aggressive, then you have to go up and up, you know, you have to build the song up and up and then explode it. Because if you just attack, you know, if you only have this aggressive music but without a culmination or without, uh, uh, you know, retreating back, it does kind of sound very hard to listen to. And for many, maybe for some would be very annoying to listen to. But it's a good song, it's a good production. Um, what these three songs so far, which are my top four, three and second, uh, right? What they do, they lack. They lack some small details in the sound. It's, you know, it's a small 
tricks which could which stays in the back background of the music but you know which add the flavors it's like you know a little bit if as, as you when you add a little bit cinnamon in a coffee it, it tastes it changes a lot the taste of the coffee the coffee doesn't taste anymore just like coffee you feel like you have a dessert and something like that do you know what i mean i hope you understand what i mean uh, these three songs from Ana Odobescu, from Marcella Skripkaru and uh, from uh, Tina G have a lack of a final product because uh, it's never enough to have a base, it's never enough to have a foundation. You need to decor your song, you need to add some small tricks, hooks in the back of the music because otherwise, otherwise your song at this stage, at this time it's gonna look flat. You, you should always understand that the sound, the music, can attract with its you know basics, right? With its uh, initial. But if it has some back hooks, it can attract other people as well. You know. Meanwhile, those small details could attract more audience to your song. That's why these three songs they are good. Uh, probably Marcella Skipkar would be my second. Uh, the third would be Tina G, and probably the fourth would be Ana Odabescu. Uh, they are lacking uh, arrangement, they are lacking um, the final cut to their songs. So that means for the first position from me, my support, even though I'm not a big thing, I make not a big deal, but I can allow myself to say that, you know, feeling proud to give my support toward Vera Surcano. Let's all give applause to her. Um, I like Vera Turcano. Unlike other artists, she's present in a digital uh, world. She's present, she's feeding with the little com uh, comments because she's on Eurovision Moldova, she's on many other platform, platforms. This girl wants to go to Eurovision. She's listening to the people, she's listening to constructive critics. She's been last year in the competition, in the national selection, she came second. She had a very good, interesting song, she had amazing show it was a show it was a show that i haven't seen in a national selection so far and i'm very eager to see what she's gonna give this year the song itself is very cool i like in the beginning dun, dun, dun. you know it sounds theatrical the song give me visionary it keeps me in a dark room you know where she starts to sing and I really, when I listen to her song, I can picture myself a story. And that's when a song is a good song. When it's either the song, it's giving me a story on a show, the way Maruf does, or the song itself, it's helping me to, you know, create a story in my head. The song has a mood, the song has a personality, the song has small details which, uh, you know, add to the value and to the richness of the song. Uh, when I listen to her song, it also, you know, as I've said, it's it's quite dark uh, um, music. Let's say it is. It's a dark creation because the the way the song leads in the beginning is very dark, but then the chorus is very very uh, powerful. It's very energetic, and I can feel that I'm surrounded on the swirl of a storm or the wind. And the song it's quite sad, but it's also given into very you know, uh, a perspective, a very interesting perspective, you know, of giving this cold relationship to topic. I really like it. Uh, uh, Vera Turcano is very full of energy. She has the experience. She's been on X Factor Turkey. She's been on many competitions. She already been in national selection in Eurovision. She, ha she has done a great job. She has started with a beautiful poster, which is very interesting, very contemporary, very, you know, social media friendly. She is ready to go to Eurovision. And I hope the same message I had to Maruv, I have to the juries in Moldova. Please do not be scared of sending Vera Turcano. Because uh, I don't, I might uh, consider the thing that some of the juries might be scaring sending Vera Turcano because of Lydia Isak, because Lydia Isak had an amazing song, very contemporary, very radio friend in 2016, and she flopped. But it was a hard year. The, the songs were really of the high standards and most of them were very upbeat songs. This year so far we have mostly ballads running in the competition in Eurovision. So Vera Turcano can very easily attract a niche share in the audience and the market of Eurovision. Uh, and to be honest, out of all the songs given this year, 
Vera Turcano has a international level quality song. She has a charisma, she has a personality. I hope she will be on a stage very, very free. Please, Vera, you have to be confident. You are confident, you are good. Your song is very good. You have a good voice, you have a good, very nice personality. You know, I trust you and we all can see in you a potential representative of Moldova. Moldova is used to send a lot of folk music, which I like it. Uh, but you know, we need to refresh a little bit our image. We need to be attractive for younger generation as well. Because last year many people were confused about Doredos uh, getting 10th position. We shall not forget, it's 35, 41 years uh, medium average voters at Eurovision. So it was understand why uh, Doredos took 10th position. This year, even if we don't take a high position, but I believe we will be in top 10, probably in top 15. I don't know yet because we haven't heard all the songs so far. But so far, Vera would be uh, very much likely to be included in top 10. Uh, and I've seen many, many tops uh, in YouTube's, you know, personal top 10, top 18, you know, top each national selection. And Vera Turcano is leading uh, almost everywhere. It used to be Lume, you know, they were competing with the format Lume. Now, since Lume is kicked out, Vera Turcano is a clear uh, public favorite among YouTubers, among Facebook, because uh, I'm also very present in many Eurovision groups uh, on a Facebook. She's the favorite and um, she could refresh a little bit the image of Moldova in Eurovision. She would be very much appealing to younger generation, very much appealing to internet, to Facebook. This doesn't mean that she's gonna win high, but at least people are gonna realize that Moldova is actually young. The same story we had with the Bul Bulgaria last year. They had a very nice song, very good, uh, very interesting, very creative song. Yeah, they came 13th, but they remain to be a public favorite. And people keep talking about Bulgaria and people keep uh, complimenting Bulgaria for a great job. The same way as Macedonia has been doing for, for the last two years. So Moldova does need Vera Turkana, even though she, even if she would, ne if she wouldn't take the higher, if she would not take the higher position, at least she's going to give the signs to the world that Moldova can create a radio friendly music, that we are still young. So my hope uh, and uh, my uh, wishes of good luck uh, goes to Vera Turcanu. I know she, you can do it, she can do it uh, and uh, she promised to do a revamp so she's considering to make a huge revamp in case she's winning the competition and I understand this idea because it's also a huge investment. So I hope that she will perform greatly and um, we'll see her on Tel Aviv. If conspiracy that we are running this year regarding that all the countries are sabotaging Israel is true, well that's gonna confirm. If Vera Turkana doesn't go to the uh, Israel the same way as Maruf did not go to Eurovision and many many other countries and songs like Laura Breta didn't go to Eurovision that's gonna be a confirmation that our, about our conspiracy theory that there is something running behind you know and Israel people are uh, comploting against Israel thank you so much guys for being with me today and please comment down below who do you think should go from Moldova uh, what's your rationale behind that you know What's your favorite Moldovan uh, representative? What are the constructive remarks? I believe constructive remarks are much more valuable than compliments uh, regarding of Moldova. Uh, who is the alternative? And what's your opinion about the whole uh, country representing or uh, competing in Eurovision uh, Song Contest? Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next video. Shoo!